Lead the agency's probe into Hunter Biden is no longer with the bureau tonight. Assistant special agent in charge Timothy Tebow retired over the weekend. Fox News has learned that Tebow, as his standard procedure, was walked out of the Washington field office on Friday. The FBI does not comment on personnel matters. So the legal drama over how the FBI is handling the materials it took in that August 8th search of former President Trump's compound continues. Let's get some insight into the latest developments tonight from former federal prosecutor Joe Moreno and former Deputy Assistant Attorney General John Yu. Great to have you both with us, gentlemen. Hey, Shannon. Hey, Shannon. Okay, so the New York Times writing this, uh, they say that the request for a special master could open a door for delays to investigation. So this is that third party that the Trump team has asked for. They say as a matter of substance, the request is puzzling. Mr. Trump's lawyers made it far too late. So the FBI has already seemingly examined everything. Indeed, on Monday, the Justice Department said that it had reviewed documents seized in the search and set aside those possibly covered by attorney-client privilege, a different issue from the one Mr. Trump had raised. So, John, what will the judge do in deciding whether or not to let this third party person go through documents the FBI says it's already gone through? First, we should realize that it takes exceptional circumstances to appoint a special master in a case like this at all. The fact that the district judge here is considering it shows, I think, that this court believes it might have been too loose or lax in allowing the search warrant to go out in the way it did, and now it's trying to fix the problem at the back end. The second thing, as you pointed out, this is only about attorney-client privilege in term for, for the Justice Department taint team. But Mr. Trump, he's claiming that executive privilege, the confidentiality between a president and his aides is at stake. And President Biden apparently waived that executive privilege. But the Supreme Court has said that there's still an issue to decide whether the current president has the right to waive unilaterally privileges, confidentiality between past presidents mm -hmm. and their aides. So that's what President Trump still has a good issue to bring forward to the special master. Yeah, and that's what his um, attorney, Jim Trusty, who's been on this show many times and all over the network, but now is officially representing the president. Um, the former president has said um, he thinks they're ignoring, ignoring the concept of executive privilege, the Presidential Records Act, all those things. So they're going to keep pushing for that special master. We'll see what happens on Thursday for that hearing. In the meantime, the Wall Street Journal uh, editorial board has a, a piece outlining what happened in former Secretary Clinton's case with Jim Comey saying likelihood of trouble here, but we're not going to prosecute. We couldn't you know, get a prosecution. So they say this tonight. We didn't like the Clinton standard, but we didn't establish it. If Mr. Garland, of course, the current AG, can't make a compelling case that Mr. Trump's transgressions are greater than Mrs. Clinton's with enough clear and convincing evidence to warrant a criminal charge, the better judgment is not to prosecute and put the country through the trauma of a political trial that half of America will suspect is a case of unequal justice. Joe, how does the attorney general wade through these waters now? Shannon, you know, it's absolutely correct. I mean, the public is not stupid here. I mean, we have a memory of what's gone on. And if the Justice Department has any true interest in restoring confidence of a large part of the population that has not liked what it has seen the last few years, it can take three discrete steps right now. Stop first. Stop any opposition to this special master. They can say, you know what? We don't think it's necessary, but we have no problem. We have nothing to hide. Let this independent observer come in and get involved. Involved. Two, the Justice Department can announce right now, within a week, by Labor Day, they will either pursue criminal charges in this matter against Donald Trump or anyone else they think they have a righteous case against, or they'll put it to bed. Do not leave it out there like a cancer to metastasize, which will just fuel speculation. And then three, stop the leaks. Mm -hmm. Why are we reading in the Washington Post and the New York Times details about this case? The DOJ might think it has to battle. Donald Trump in the public sphere, but the reality is it should be better than that. It should not it, not allow leaks at all. If it catches anyone doing it, make a public example of it. Be better and stop these leaks that just you know really pervade the, these cases and lose the public trust in the process. I want to play something from Senator Lindsey Graham, Republican. Um, he and the president have had an interesting relationship. He's currently one of his big defenders, again, at least in this scenario uh, regarding Mar-a-Lago. Here's what Senator Graham said. Most Republicans, including me, believes when it comes to Trump, uh, there is no law. It's all about getting him. There's a double standard when it comes to Trump. 
So, John, we all agree that no one is above the law. Current president, former president, it doesn't matter. But there's also this concept that we believe nobody is below the law. And there are some out there saying they think that's what's happening with former President Trump, um, that he's not getting a fair shake. When you compare these two cases, like Mrs. Clinton's, what do you say? I, I think people are questioning the uh, legitimacy of the FBI and the Justice Department because they see unfair standards being brought. Whether that's the case or not, I don't think the Justice Department should pursue President Trump the first time any former president would ever have been charged with a crime. In fact, this is the first time any president has had his house searched on probable cause. There's evidence of a crime there. It shouldn't be for mishandling classified information. As you said, Shannon, past people, past high officials who've had problems with that have not been charged or have been let off with just misdemeanors. I think what's really going on here is that the Justice Department is trying to send a message to President Trump that there's a lot more coming down the line in the future mm -hmm. about January 6th and that investigation. And both sides are now flexing their muscles to show that they're going to try to drive hard bargains and be tough when it comes to those investigations. Yeah, we cannot forget there is a whole nother track and there are investigations and allegations uh, in New York. The attorney general there, very aggressive with the Trump organization as well. Um, there's a lot for this former president and his legal team to juggle. Uh, John and Joe, thank you very much. Come back soon. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks, Shannon. Georgia as well. We're mentioning all of the things percolating out there. All right, first up in tonight's crime crime.